Right, so we're here with a, another instalment in this um, design and build of a, a 16 millimeter scale version of the 24 horsepower Hudson Huntlet diesel loco. Um, as I said, I built one of these, a tiny one of these in 09 before, um, but I'm looking at scaling this up to a much bigger, much bigger version at 16 millimeter scale. Um, last time we looked at the the kind of the chassis parts, I'd messed up because I'd got the 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 axle supports in the wrong place. I'd used the the gauge instead of the back to back um, to position these accidentally, um, which had messed it up and meant it wouldn't go on the on the track. Um, but here you can see I've, I've printed a, an entire entire chassis. It's a bit different. Looks quite a bit different to the last one, uh, but fitted both axles um, and it will actually if I find some track, um, it will actually um, now sit on the track and you can kind of see that nicely. Um, so it will it will work. Um, I've got um, the motor I've moved to be in front of the front axle. Um, this is just so it will fit in the body better. It does mean obviously that weight's <laughs> uh, a bit of an issue at the front. It's not exactly um, stable, um, but it doesn't need much weight um, to hold it hold it level. Um, in fact, just the the single battery, as we'll see in a second, is enough to get it to stay level and, and run on, on on the track. So in fact, if I just make this bit of track longer. We can have a, a quick look <clears throat> and see it hopefully um, move uh, along the track. Um, so let me wire this up. It takes a. I will at some point actually put a proper control system on here, so I don't have to keep doing this with batteries and loose wires. But for now, it's just a just a single. Uh, and as you can see, that's now sitting um, sitting stably with the with the battery on it. Um, but if I just do, if I just literally just kind of hook this on here. Uh, it will then run on the track. So let me, let me just get this through here. You know where it won't fall off. Um, there we go. So, progress. Um, so yeah, so progress. It's um, it's working nicely. Uh, you see wheels are rotating. Uh, they're still just running in the. The printed holes are still not bearings or anything yet um, while I work out sizes. Um, but as you can see, with just even with just the battery on the back, it's uh, balance isn't isn't too isn't too bad, and the, the wheels all rotate nicely. Um, so that's that's all all good. Um, so that's progress at least on the powering its side. Take the battery off. Uh, other way um, <clears throat> on the chassis side, I've done another print. Um, I haven't assembled this one as such yet, um, so this is the kind of the raw parts. I'll let you have a look because we didn't see the kind of raw pieces last time I'd assembled um, some things. So as you see, this is quite different uh, from the piece you saw last time. I haven't glued the buffer beams on yet, um, but we've got this whacking up big hole um, in the top um, to take the the motor buggy. Um, so yeah, so there's the, the unfortunately. Um, this now is not as big, a, as good a print as the previous one. The uh, problem of adding the hole has meant that this thing kind of flexes quite a bit now. Um, it didn't do this on the previous one, um, which is is not great. And as you can see here, it's it's warped slightly. Um, I don't know whether this was during printing or when I peeled it off the build plate when it was a little softer. Uh, but either way, that's not really really ideal. Um, and also, you can see that the way I printed printed this with the step in it. Um, so that it will fit without protruding into where the kind of cab area is, uh, as means that this is not entirely square either. There's a bit of a, a bit of a flex in the middle um, again where the, the two parts uh, meet. So I think basically I've made this by trying to make it so that it was easy um, to print and easy to assemble, and so that the whole motor bogey could be removed. I think I've made things um, more complex than they need to be. But let me show you how this kind of assembles and then we'll, 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 we'll talk about what we might do differently. Um, so in the motor buggy, you can see I've got kind of three mounting holes, one, two, um, and there's a third one here. So the idea was that, um, rather, so that I could print this flat and get it to fit within the printer. What I've done is I've also printed this little, um, clip. So it's got two pins on the bottom, uh, another two holes for the retaining holes and cutouts for M2 hex nuts. I got the sizing um, on these ever so slightly wrong so they won't quite fit. Um, but anyway, the idea was that this would kind of clip into the top of here and glue on, and that would give you um, two, the, the front two uh, retaining holes. Um, the back of the engine bay 
um, I haven't printed the whole piece, but the back of the engine bay um, again has a, a hole for an M2 hex nut, uh, and that fits so that when you look at it from the bottom, the M2 hex nut is kind of in the middle of the hole, and that gives you the three the three retaining screws essentially. Um, so you can see now if I if I put this over here, the idea was that you'd you'd build up the body <coughs> um, and then kind of lower it over over the chassis and, and clip it into place. Um, but it's a bit, as I say, it's a bit um, it's a bit finicky still. Um, it does fit, um, but I think <coughs> um, I made it kind of way too complicated. And as you can see, this thing flexes horribly, um, even with it in. Um, and getting it so that it sits level when you've got issues of removing support material from that stepped base is a, is a bit of an issue as well. Uh, but there we go, that's in. And you can see because it doesn't fit quite level at this end, uh, this wheel is further down than this one, so sideways on it's not it's not perfectly level. Um, <clears throat> so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna change the way I um, I design this, and I think what I'm gonna do is go back to a single a single print for this with just the hole for the motor at the front, um, <clears throat> and that will and then um, if I have the axle supports actually printed onto the onto here, um, I'll be able to essentially slide the axles and gears in from the side as I build this up. Um, it doesn't mean they're all trapped. In, in the built model, uh, but I don't think that's I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. There's no reason I'm going to need to take them out very often, uh, and as long as I provide some access um, to kind of this motor area, so I can have electronics and stuff in there, that shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. But I think I can do that through the side, essentially through the access panels in the actual in the actual kind of loco itself, um, and then <clears throat> then once it's built, um, I can fit the axle boxes onto these pins once the wheels are in place and I'll, I'll show you those in a minute haven't trimmed the axles to length yet so I can't actually fit the axle boxes and the axles um, but let me just show you the kind of the rest of this so buffer beams reprinted these also have um, locating pins so um, this is the front one so you can see it kind of um, locks into uh, pushes into place uh, with the, the pins in the corner gives a bit more kind of positive location uh, for where these things where these things fit, um, <clears throat> the front one also ha front of the local also has a, a gap here uh, that becomes essentially a square ho a rectangular hole. Uh, that's for a, a locating pin on the on the radiator, um, so that can kind of um, nicely fit. I don't have enough hands, but that will nicely fit in the in there, um, so that you can then uh, again glue all this all this together. Um, and it's kind of held in place by the retaining clip and the and the buffer beam, um, so yeah, that kind of kind of works nicely. And as I say, this is the this is the back of the engine bay, um, so you can see there's quite a lot of space around the motor. Um, you can see also why I had to move the motor to in front of the axle rather than behind, so it wouldn't kind of foul on this on this on this piece. Uh, but it does mean that there's a lot of space. Um, for the battery and any control, any control stuff, both behind between the motor and the and the engine, back of the engine bay, but also above it here, there's quite a bit of space. Obviously, there's the there's the kind of the top of the engine bay to fit, but um, that can probably be made quite hollow. Um, so there's quite a, quite a lot of space there. Um, so yeah, that's all kind of promising. It looks like it's going in the, the kind of the right direction shape wise. I just need to, um, I think, simplify this. I've 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 gone the wrong way with trying to. To make it easy to print and easy to assemble and I think I just need to go back to something a bit a bit simpler um, so let's show you the, the, the kind of one final piece if I just push this um, out again um, we can have a look at <coughs> um, one of the axle boxes so um, here's a here's an axle box if I can get the camera to focus um, so you can see it's got Hunslet printed on it it's got the leaf springs uh, the bolts. This is just a, a scaled up version of the of the ones I did in 009. I haven't done any new new detailing here, so this is just shows the detail I added to the 009 version that you could never actually uh, never actually see, uh, which was yeah work I didn't need to do originally. But anyway, um, but as you can see, it's got a I've printed a, a slot uh, in the back, and that just fits onto these pins. So um, you can kind of just push the axle box down onto the pin. Uh, just making sure the leaf springs kind of don't bend as you do it um, and then it's just kind of glued in glued in place but obviously I can't add those until the uh, until I've trimmed the axles on this test version um, and obviously gluing them in on the final one would trap the trap the axles permanently because you wouldn't be able to slide them out again 
Um, but I think that's I think that's yeah I think that's probably the way to go because it means we can get uh, a much more solid solid piece here that we'd have to worry about warping. Uh, it makes it just much easier to much easier to assemble. So I think that's the plan. Um, so a bit more a bit more work. I think I'm gonna essentially for the next up by the time of the next update I think I'll have gone back to um, basically filling this hole in and just having a a hole for the motor, having the axle supports actually printed on the bottom. And I'm hoping to also do the the cutout for the for the footwell, um, so that that can all integrate with the axle supports underneath. Um, there's no point if I'm going to add the axle supports to this. There's no point um, doing that without making sure they fit with the with the footwell cutout. Um, so yeah, so I think the the locating pin for the radiator uh, will be all right. I don't think I need to change that particularly. Um, I did wonder about going for two one at each end to make it a bit more a bit more um, solid and square because this one will rotate in the hole a little bit um, but we'll see and I need to also if I'm not going to screw um, the chassis to this I need to think about how this again clips onto here and that's probably again um, going to be retaining clip or two so there will be some holes in this piece but um, um, you know holes this size or smaller uh, rather than this huge central section that means that it um, it flexes um, but other than that I think yeah it's not it's not it's not doing too badly um, I am going through um, a fair amount of resin, but uh, we shall see. Um, I want to get it right because I want a, I want a version I'm happy with. There's no point with a a model I'm not not happy with. Um, so and this one, this one, with this 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 flex here is just that, that that's never gonna it's never gonna last. Um, so I need to I need to change that. So yeah, so that's the the kind of where we are for now and the uh, the plan for for moving forward. Um, so we'll see where we get to by the time we get to the next video.